Hey guys, still here and welcome back to more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is another special video in the sense that it is a tournament ship that didn't get picked, but Yaniski, who designed the ship, wanted to get the ship featured so bad that he made a donation to the channel through the Patreon link that you can find down below in the description. And now he's going to be able to fight the French. He sent in the Lauri Torni class. Let's have a look at her. She's doing 34 knots, displacing 37,000, um, sorry, 993 tons, so that's almost 38k. Um, well under budget at that. Main armament. Whoa, that's a long barrel. 70 kilometer range? <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Um, that's a lot of range. Um, she's capable of hitting targets with HE at 55 kilometers. And with those really long barrels, you're also going to get a lot of muzzle velocity. So the chance that your shell just arcs up and then comes down is low. You're going to be more, let's say, flat-ish arcs. Um, at which point you can get up to 34 inches of pen, 20 kilometers, 10 kilometers. That increases to 60 inches of pen. Yeah. And the closer you get, 5,000 meter range, 70 inches of pen. Um, whether that's actually true, I don't know because, you know... Sometimes the game goes, yeah, but you know, we're angled and the whole thing doesn't fly. It's a bit weird like that. Um, the reload's a bit on the low end at 54 seconds, but that's the trade-off for having those really long barrels. Now she has 12 of those guns. She has zero secondaries. Nothing like that. Um, maximum bulkheads, wider platform, but lower drafts. Interesting. How is that going to affect the ship? How is that going to affect her? Because... They do change some things. You get a higher base accuracy, but then again... Um, no, actually, you also get base accuracy boost here. Okay, so this thing is going to get ridiculously accurate. Long barrels, low draft, high beam. Okay. Um, if she gets penned, then the water's going to spread faster. Her acceleration is less. But yeah, ooh, plus 25% water spread here and there. Oof. This thing gets penned, she's going to be in a lot of trouble. She has veteran crew, 100%, spacious quarter. So if she does take crew losses, it doesn't matter that much. Anti-torpedo 1, double hull bottom, anti-flood 2, reinforced bulkheads 2. Interesting setup, not picking 3. Especially with a, a ship like this, I would probably want all the water pumping and ship repairs that I can. Uh, Citadel 4. Now, I didn't mention the torpedo launchers yet. She has 24-inch torpedo launchers, which can hit out to 23 kilometers. Minus 36% visibility. So there's probably, yeah, oxys. Um, Autoloaders. Reduced complements of torpedoes. Interesting. So you get one shot, and that's it. Send it, and you're gone. Um, you can lose the torpedo launchers right after, which <laughs> is fairly likely to happen. Generation 3 radar hydros to make sure you can spot torpedoes again, boosting the long range accuracy. Armor. <laughs> 25 inches of armor belt. <laughs> it's a good thing we're running this under 1.3.9.9. Um, <laughs> I don't think you could get this under the, the next version because in 1.4.0, um, the fun police has come, sorry, the devs have come in. And uh, they're going to change the maximum amount of armor on ships, which I don't understand, but okay. 25-inch um, main belt, 5-inch fore, 5-inch aft. This is an interesting choice. This is an interesting choice. The 25-inch main belt means that the main belt's basically invulnerable. But you got 5-inch fore, 5-inch aft. So uh, this part of the ship, that part of the ship are fair game. And if they do flood, the water can travel in. Because you got that higher water spread chance. And it's going to be interesting. Main deck, 8 inch, 4 inch, 4 and 4 inch aft, 25 inches on the conning. That thing is maxed out, <laughs> much like the main belt. Oh man. 4 inches of superstructure. Um, you got 10 inch per bet, 13.6 on the side of the turrets, 4. Ooh. 4 inch top armor. That's living dangerously. Because the top of these turrets get penned. And some ships do have a, sh a lower shell velocity. A lower muscle velocity. So the shell is more likely going to do that. And hit your turret from the, uh, the top. Uh, you only get a low flash fire chance. So that's pretty good. 
This is going to be some ship. This is going to be some ship. Okay, here we go. Load attorney class. 13.9 inch guns. 50% chance to hit from Mackenzie. Uh, Lutzo, 50% as well. And Lodi 20, 47. Whoa. Like, I was expecting accuracy, but not this level. The French are still trying to turn those main guns towards the targets. Close calls on the... Well, what I can only assume is the name giver of the class here. Those 16 inches are scary. They look so big. But... Length-wise, they're kind of pale in comparison to these 13.960s. Sorry, 63s even. That is such a long, long barrel. The problem... They're pen. Right? I said they're going to be more likely to pen the belt. But at this range, they might try and pen the deck. And they don't have the pen for that. Not on HE, not on AP. So, I wonder what happens to this ship. Partials, partial, partial, yeah. Main belt, partial pen, secondary gun, partial pen, aft deck, main deck. Nothing but partials. They can't pen them. They're going to have to get a little closer. I'm also kind of concerned about that fore and aft deck on the Lord Eternity class, because that is a weak spot of this ship. If they start taking hits there... Ooh, blocked. If they start taking hits there, this ship could be in a lot of trouble. 81% chance to hit? What? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a lot of firepower. A lot of accuracy. Barrel's coming up. Litzo preparing to fire. There she goes. I think we're, again, going to see nothing but partial pens here. All ships nicely coordinating their fire, focusing every shell in, well, all at the same salvo, which is not necessarily ideal. Damage to main gun, ricochets, one flooding. Not that bad. Ooh, you took a hit. You took two hits for 1,900 damage. Right through the main deck. The main deck has eight inches of armor. Yeah. 150% armor quality, plus 8 inches. Mm, or well, not, not plus 8 inches, but that's like, what? Um, about 20 inches of armor? Yeah, 16 inches, not really going to care about 20 inches of armor. No. 75% chance to pen the ship. That is pretty spooky. Oh, we got a torpedo launch. Lord Eternity launching torpedoes. Are we going to see something from the Mackenzie as well? No, not yet. Oh, that's starting to add up. Partials. Secondary gun over pen. Aft belt full pen. Look at that. The ship is definitely starting to feel the hurt. Peppered with side impacts there. Most of which seem to have been the partial pens, because otherwise you'd see the, the big holes like that. That's a full pen. What's a bit of a waste is that the Lori probably torpedoed the, the trailing ship. Which means that these two are going to escape regardless. Like if you torpedo the middle ship, you're far more likely to have other ships be maneuvering at that time. And thus still at risk of taking a torpedo hit. Monk, only partial pens. One full pen. Are you guys pushing in? An interesting choice. Range 13 kilometers. At 13 kilometers, these guns are starting to get really dangerous. Because we're at about 52 inches of armor pen at that tier. So they should be able to start laying into the French. And their chance to get penned is far less. But the main belt... Well, main belt completely impervious, as expected. Uh, bow and stern. 
Not too much. Another salvo. Where are those torpedoes at? Oh, they're still casually cruising. Has anybody else launched their torps? Nope. Nobody. Ooh, that was a nice one. Two floodings. Pretty good. So far, the Germans are leading. 12 kilometers out. We are now at more than 54 inches of armor pen. Potential. I wonder when the French secondary is going to start. They should have. Oh, uh, they, they only got six barrels. Not that much. And the French reload is probably really long with those 16s. Oh, they switched targets. Where's that second? No, they don't have secondaries. More flooding. Again, now the shells are too good. So they're either too good or they're partial penning. I would like to see some more, well, balanced pens rather than this. You're switching targets, aren't you? Yeah, they're switching targets to the lead French ship. Torpedoes. Here. One, two. The third one is no longer with us. This one's completely armless. This one might find its way to the trailing ship. They're definitely taking evasive action. Because you can see that they're breaking formation now. They're all turning to starboard. That's the AI's torpedo avoid mode. It's almost like the French aren't firing. But they are. They're just not hitting very much. Yeah. They're doing quite a bit of firing, but they're just not hitting anything. Is that torpedo going to actually do anything, or...? It might. I think they're going to complete the turn in time. Yeah, they're fine. Still a pretty close call. It's less than 100 meters. And by doing that, they're pushing away <laughs> the French ships. So much so that their main turrets on the bow probably can't fire. So... Even though they didn't hit with a torpedo, arguably it really helped their cause. Because now they're going to make sure that the French have lost out on some DPS. Which is very valuable all by itself. Oh. Lutzo refusing to fire. Great. Okay, so somebody said if you turn AI control off and you turn it back on... The gun should start firing again. They are in fact not. Incoming torpedo! Time for the Germans to start taking evasive action. This is just the one here. But torpedoes rarely travel alone. We're definitely getting some damage in here. Lutzo is just refusing to fire. Mackenzie's probably turning. And thereby can't actually get her guns on target. If you've got a barrel that long, your turret rotation is going to be pretty bad. And now it's time for the Germans to run away. But their turret, is, uh, their turret placement is slightly more balanced in the form that they have half of it bow, half of it stern. The French are two-thirds bow. Levrette. What's the reload? 65 seconds. So it's only 5 seconds more than the Germans. No, 10 seconds more. Okay. Oh boy. Levrette taking some hurt here. That was very uncomfortable. That was a lot of damage. Uh, main belt penned. Their main belt is 17 and a half inches, plus 163%. So, yeah, it's going to take some effort to get penned. But the aft belt can get penned. 
even at eight and a half inches. The two inches have been destroyed. The torpedo launchers. Oh, they're also 24 inch oxygens. Yep. Interesting. A torpedo avoidance. Yeah, sonar three. They'll spot those torpedoes with plenty of warning. More shells biting into the side of the hull, overpenning the French Levrette. She's trying to turn. Mackenzie has fired again. Lori. Yeah, old German ships are firing. Excellent. What about the Poisson Magnifique? She's just sent torps. Not too long ago. Some blocked damage on Fortune. Or Fortune, probably. You're targeting. Fortune, why? You got the badly damaged Levret. Don't do it. Ooh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was painful for the French. Could have been a lot worse, actually. Only really one shell penned the main belt. 386 damage. Not bad, considering they got about 900 base damage, or potential damage on AP. This is badly angled. Good luck penning that. One flood. Yeah, one flood. Sorry, two floods, one pen. But that was what? Through the bow? No, the main belt. And the fore belt. Yep. Fortune is starting to feel the wrath here. Did she also recently launch her torps? We've got inbound torps on the French here. Which could be a problem for the Levrette. And I cannot see the outbound torps for the French. I.e. the inbound torps on the Germans. Mackenzie trying to get our guns on target again. Can't turn fast enough. <laughs> Levrette... Might take a torpedo here. She is very well protected. Anti-torp 5. She'll fill the torpedo, but it won't really do that much damage. The guns will, though. The guns are doing a lot of damage. The Germans are taking almost no damage from the French. Another pen. Look at that. 20k damage done by the Germans. 2.2k damage taken by the Germans. Time for the Mackenzie to start turning. Urgently. If Laudy overturns, she could still be at risk for that torpedo. No, she's fine. Outbound salvo from Lutzo. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. <sighs> Four and a half thousand points of damage on the lorry. Flooding on three compartments. Four. That's gonna hurt. A lot. Anti-flood two. She does have maximum bulkheads. Her crew is mostly intact. But that impact really ripped open the hole. Lost her quite a bit of health. German ships are in massive disarray after dodging the torpedoes. Lutzo doing all sorts of donuts, trying to turn, fall back into formation behind the Mackenzie, but nobody's able to get their guns on target. Because they're all turning so much. There we go. Now that they are getting their guns on target, the Fortune... Well, it's not that fortunate. Taking three floodings very quickly. Listing badly. Repeater launcher destroyed on the Mackenzie. Nothing of value was lost. Because you're not really going to hurt the French with the torpedo anyway. Ooh, are you still flooding? 55% buoyancy. 91% chance to hit? Damn. Oh, incoming torpedoes. Three of them. No. Two outbounds, one inbound. That was the last salvo from Lutzo. Salvo outbound from Lori. Finally, some more torpedo attacks. Oh, the fortune is down. Sunk. Are flooding? That leaves the badly damaged Levrette and the Poisson Magnifique. They're gonna probably start taking a bunch more flooding and die. 
<laughs> the AI in full panic mode. <laughs> Shit, torpedo. Yeah, no, no worries. It's not that bad. There we go. More flooding as predicted. Bow, stern, midships, flash fire on the poisson. Oh boy. Their damage control is faltering as their crew is dying quickly. Having engine damage on top of that is not particularly helpful. She's flooding very quickly now. No way she'll be able to come back from this. 2% buoyancy, 1, and gone. And I'm kind of worried for the Leverette that she's going to take the same treatment. She's going to take damage much like this. Go down. So it's uh, interesting to see that the... Oof. Ooh. <laughs> the ships that did not get selected for the tournament that got sent in by uh, donation um, are doing so well. What the hell? Can somebody ship WD-40 to the Lizzo? Because their bow turrets are not working. They might need some WD-40 to get unstuck. Mackenzie? Perfectly fine. And the Lord Attorney is still there. And still lobbing shells with extreme accuracy at the French battlecruiser. Which can't say the same because she's too badly listing. Flooding. That'll be the end of her. 2% 0.5. Gone. Leverette down. So. Well done to the Lord Attorney class. Janiski, you've won against the French. Only 179% or sorry, 179 crew members were killed on the German ships. Like the French did almost nothing. Okay. I didn't actually expect the Germans to do this well, considering the fact that they had that well, basically triple or nothing armor scheme. It just worked out. That 25-inch main belt, it worked out. The French were basically unable to do any kind of damage. So well done. Now, if you will also have your ship featured in a video, you can. Uh, link down below in the description is the Patreon link. Go to the tournament special. It's a one-time donation. Um, so you subscribe once and then you immediately uh, unsubscribe from Patreon. And then you can... Well, you won't get charged for the next month. That's the key benefit. Um, you'll get your own video with your own tournament ship. And you'll immediately be helping myself and the channel. So I would really appreciate that. Thank you for watching this one. Um, again, Janitsky, well done to the ship. Well done to the designer. And congrats on beating the French. Uh, not the first time the Germans have beat the French and probably not the last. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon for more.